Asante Yesu kwa neema yako. Wokovu nimepata bure. Asante Yesu kwa neema yako. Kufa ningekufa. Asante Yesu kwa neema yako. Kutupwa ningetupwa ni kwa neema. 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 Greetings ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Waiting Room. This is a program by Waiting Rooms Trust and as usual we bring the finest and people with testimonies, great testimonies and who are here to inspire, encourage and also to educate all of us. So today's show, I'm with two amazing women. Men, don't worry, we'll have a show for you next. <laughs> um, I'd like you to meet them and... I don't want to introduce them. I don't think I'm worth it to introduce them to you. So let me just invite my sister, Tabby, to briefly... I don't want to say your second name. You remember I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Blame it on where I come from. <laughs> the tongue has refused. Yeah, I'm just like Tabby. Um, okay, let me speak to Tabby. Let me just tell us briefly about yourself. Just introduce yourself. Let us know who you are before we roll. Hi Adasa, thank Hi. you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Tabitha Ndishu. Um, I am born again, I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He's the savior and the lover of my soul. Yeah. Um, I can't really move and have my being without him. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a fibroid advocate. Um, I have had fibroids for the last, uh, let's say, three years. Mm -hmm. I became a fibroid warrior last year after my last surgery. Mm -hmm. I thank God for healing me because I believe, you know, he's the one who gives the doctors the knowledge True. to treat us. And yeah, and my journey has been quite interesting it actually led me to start an initiative where i bring awareness and just try to offer support and encouragement and just build that sisterhood uh, for women who have fibroids to feel you know loved appreciated and even find holistic solutions to mm -hmm. the condition um that's my story in a nutshell and right now i am expecting oh <laughs> surprised me um he's answered my prayers and mm -hmm. he has kept his promise mm -hmm. amen yeah amen. and that you know, is that's super so exciting yeah. yes yeah wow wow i'm telling myself i wish i met you when i was battling with fibroids but you know what god purpose that we'd meet today yes here yes and seeing that baby bump i'm just like wait my <laughs> <is coming." laughs> it is you're next in line for them for your miracle amen, amen. amen. To that. yeah amen to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Tabby. Nice to have you. This is the waiting room. Yeah. And I'm sure we, you will we'll share more as we go along. Yeah. And the next person I'd like to introduce, um, let me try. Nikwanema. <laughs> <laughs> you can take it up from there. <laughs> <laughs> when you start, you go all the way. It's not working. <laughs> Okay, my name is Kambua. I'm not new to the waiting room or waiting rooms trust. Mm -hmm. I'm a friend of Hadassah and of the amazing work that you are doing. Hadassah, I continually celebrate what you're doing um, for people walking this journey of waiting. And yeah, I probably look a little fuller than usual. Sikushi, <laughs> but <laughs> seafood. <laughs> it's also food. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm grateful to be on the journey and just to experience God in every season mm -hmm. of, of, of it. Um, I, I, I say that you, when you've been in the waiting room, you, you're, you're forever a member of that family in the sense that you, you don't get, it's like when you get married, you don't cease to belong to your parents' home. So True. I, I um, in as much as God has blessed me and opened my womb, I still uh, feel very much a part of women who are waiting and who are walking the journey of waiting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's very important. And uh, today's show is going to be majorly on supporting yeah. or just supporting entirety. Mm. And I think we suppose we are uh, like us to discuss support uh, from waiting room to waiting room. Mm. 
like what kind of support mm -hmm. would I expect or would I appreciate from you yeah. as a waiting sister? Yeah. Probably now that you've conceived, come where you have mates mm. and you're expecting yeah. one more. Yeah. And so just like what kind of support would I appreciate? And then also maybe we uh, will explore uh, the support that we'd appreciate from society. Mm -hmm. If you have a sister or a friend working in the waiting room, what kind of support do they appreciate? Yeah. And then let's let's just build it and see how we roll. Yeah. And so um, I was talking to a friend last week and she was telling me that since she has a baby after waiting for 10 years, mm -hmm. she doesn't know what to tell a waiting sister anymore. Like she can't stun the questions. You know the way uh, at the beginning of waiting you ask yourself so many questions like, why is God so unfair? And she's mm -hmm. telling me she's done. She's done listening to that. Yeah. And I don't know why I felt like maybe that was not mm. kind mm. because being where I am now, like where I am as Hadassah mm. is not where I was 10 years ago. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I, I was so, I'd, I was hurt by so many things. I've grown. Yeah. What do you feel as waiting sisters or probably why you waited? What kind of support would you appreciate mm. from others who are probably waiting and were already blessed? Maybe we start with you, Kambua. Um, I think, you know, when I think back on my journey, uh, I really appreciated people who, even if they didn't understand what I was feeling, they listened. And that they, they were not quick to offer solutions. Uh, because when you know when I would want to speak about it, which was probably not a lot like to many people, mm. but when I would want to speak about it, I, I, I was just looking for a safe space where I can be heard. And um, you know, usually I think what many times made me feel like just closing up is when I, you know, Hadassa, I want to talk to you about this, and then Hadassa is like, you should try IVF, you should try this. Have you thought of adoption? Mm -hmm. Have you and you know, and you give me all these things which I wasn't really looking for. I'm already aware that these options are there. I just wanted you to listen to me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, you to understand that I'm, I'm hurting at this point. Uh, maybe I want you to pray with, you know, just but, but really um, bringing yourself down to the level of that person who has m allowed themselves to be vulnerable enough to let you into their journey. Mm -hmm. um, but then the other thing that was also very important and significant for me uh, was having people who were not, um, I didn't want people walking on eggshells around me, you mm -hmm. know. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> like, don't, don't, uh, don't make your pregnancy a secret from me. You know what I mean? I like, totally understand. You, you get it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, tell me, it, it, would, it would be even more hurtful when people from close to me, I'd have to find out when they've had their babies or they're about to give birth because they, they thought they were protecting me. Mm -hmm. But I, I also want, I want to celebrate with you. I want to, um, I want to walk your journey with you. I want to, I want you to be comfortable telling me I got a positive. Sometimes it might sting me a little bit. That's mm -hmm. the reality. Yeah. But don't hide it from me. Yeah. So I think those are some of the things I'd mm -hmm. say. Yeah. Uh, I find that very interesting, Tab, before I come to you, that uh, our friends who have conceived may think that they're protecting us by yeah. hiding their pregnancies. Yeah. And then you see it later and say, I wanted to surprise you. No. No, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. It really has. It's so <laughs> crushing. Yeah. You have no idea. Yeah. Just let me know mm -hmm. if I'm grieving, like you say, or if I feel a bit... You know, that, that weird feeling. Yeah. It's okay, I'll get over it, but yeah. we'd rather just hear it from you. Yeah. Tell me, what do you think? For me, encouragement was key. Mm -hmm. um, just being around people who would tell me, it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Even when I didn't understand or believe it, mm -hmm. they would help stir my faith in God, you know, that mm -hmm. it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Encouragement is key, no matter what. And the other thing I'd say is for the people around you to know and understand the season you're in. Mm. For example, I lost uh, four children in a span of four years. Mm. And you can imagine if I just came from a DNC in hospital and I'm just meeting someone who is pregnant, for example, or I j I'm just walking into kids, that would be a trigger. That doesn't mean I wasn't happy for them, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it would trigger something, you know, it would yeah. trigger... Um, the fact that I 
possibly felt like I'll never have children. Mm -hmm. It would trigger uh, uh, just Grief. a lot. And yeah. if people don't yeah. understand, mm -hmm. and sometimes, I know it's hard for people to understand if you've never struggled with infertility, mm -hmm. but put yourself in that person's shoes mm -hmm. because some of these things are triggers. And again, I keep insisting that it's not that we're not happy for you, but there are seasons where our kids would be triggers to my trauma and my pain. And there are seasons where I'd celebrate with my sisters and I'd be happy. Mm -hmm. So just um, letting the people who probably are closest to you to understand the season you're working in at the moment. Mm -hmm. And also um, just, under just allowing the right people to be around you. Mm -hmm. Because not everybody, unfortunately, is for you. And people play different roles in your life. Jesus had 12 disciples. He had Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. He had Peter. He had all these disciples. Yeah. He had Judas who betrayed him. Mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just understanding <laughs> when Everyone. to let who yeah. within your space at what season of life you're, you're mm -hmm. at. Because the truth mm -hmm. of the matter, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 tells us there's a time for everything. There's a time yeah. to plant. Yeah. There's a time to harvest. True. So in the planting season, maybe the people who are very good at harvesting might not help you in the planting phase. True. Mm -hmm. If you get what I mean. Mm -hmm. So just being wise enough to understand the kind of people you would let in at, that, at different seasons of your waiting journey yeah. was, mm -hmm. very, was very, very important for me and it really helped me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's a friend who mentioned that when she had her loss, actually it was her eighth loss. Mm. Mm. And when she went back home, her neighbors kept asking, will you use Oh no. Wow. Like, did you sell your child? Mm. Yeah. I'm just wondering if you have neighbors, if you're pregnant and mm. you go to the hospital after yeah. baby shower and all, yeah. and you come home with empty mm. arms. Yeah. Mm. How do you... What, what, what do you think our neighbors should do in such uh, wow. cases? Because there are people who move houses because they don't yes. know how to face society. Mm. You change mm. churches. Yeah. You, mm. you know, you change workplaces mm -hmm. because of those reasons. Um, you know, and I, I think when I was young and very naive, I remember one or two instances where I had a situation where, and you're really just asking out of a, you're coming from a good place because... Tabby was heavily pregnant and mm. then I bump into her months later. I'm like, oh, how is the baby? Mm -hmm. And I think I was too young to know that being pregnant doesn't automatically equal to having a, a baby at home. True. And um, I remember on both occasions going back, just feeling so heavy hearted and like the worst human being on earth. Mm -hmm. Fine. I didn't know. And, the, and usually the women were so gracious for you. You didn't know and whatever. I think... Um, one of the things that I have found to be very important is because when we're, we're talking about pregnancy and childbirth and all this, we're always focusing on the child and constantly overlooking the woman. Mm -hmm. I think if I bump into you, Hadassah, and um, I know you were expecting a baby, the first thing I should ask is, how are you? Mm -hmm. How are you doing? Mm -hmm. And I think that already will either open you up to tell me I'm well, but mm -hmm. this happened. Yeah. In versus how is the baby? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That we're so quick. And, 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 and especially, you know, the, the times when you, if I'm a neighbor, I can tell this person went to have a baby, but I'm not hearing baby sounds. I'm not. That should already. And it's social in intelligence that we keep talking about, especially with issues of fertility. Be sensitive. Be slow to to, to asking questions mm -hmm. um, and and that's not just in the having baby it's also on that waiting journey be slow to asking questions mm -hmm. if you feel something is not adding up in your head trust me if you're close to this person if they feel comfortable enough with you they will say something mm -hmm. otherwise it's okay to be quiet and pray for somebody without necessarily throwing questions because i think those questions really break people mm. um even if they're coming from a well-meaning place i i i feel like our especially as africans we are very busy bodies mm -hmm. <laughs> you know we just want to know we just want to know but I don't think you have a you have a right to people's lives. Mm -hmm. We don't. We're not entitled to people's lives. So let them be comfortable enough to let you in in, in, in at whatever level they feel is what I'd say. What if they feel that their solution is the it? You know the, the way people yeah. approach you and say, "Okay, you, you are, try IVF Hadassah." And then I say, mm. "I know that doctor I've probably tried that with the so and so." They say, "This is different." They always come. People always come with these suggestions like. 
I know you tried that, but this particular doctor, the success rate is like 90%, <laughs> you know. Mm. In your mind, you're thinking, ah, been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. Like, how do you deal with uh, such mm. uh, unsolicited advice, basically? Tabby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really thinking about it because in my own situation, <laughs> I would normally keep quiet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd listen and I'd just smile and walk away. Mm -hmm. um, we were just talking about this before we come. <laughs> I was telling her I'm an extremist. Yeah. I don't have gray areas. Mm -hmm. it's, so it's either like when I love you, I love you hard, Hadassah. And mm -hmm. when I don't like you, it's with the same measure. <laughs> I don't, don't have, have she's honest. Honest. I don't have an in between. She I don't it. have an in between. So for me, most of the times I'd keep quiet mm -hmm. because I don't want to sound harsh. Yeah. yeah. I might end up saying something because I'm an extremist and then it would look like hey, she's so insensitive. Mm -hmm. And I'd go back home and lock myself and cry mm -hmm. and ask God, why kwani mm -hmm. What why why is this person? telling me these things why don't they care about how i feel mm -hmm. but the reality of the matter is um i think speaking up is important mm -hmm. um telling someone you know what I, do, I don't owe you an explanation first of all you don't owe anyone an explanation if you are a waiting womb say that again and you're watching <laughs> yeah you don't owe anybody yeah. an explanation mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. yeah um i think the best answer for me i'd say is I'm just waiting on God's timing. He's the creator. Yeah. Mm. He's the giver of all good gifts. Yeah. He's the giver of children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So me, me, I don't manufacture kids. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and, no. and it might come out harshly, but it's the truth. Yeah. You know, I don't manufacture kids. So mm. me, 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 yeah. In fact, the best they can do if, probably is to pray for Yeah, you I'll tell yes. them, by the talk to God about that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then come tell me. Yeah, what he what would say, he says. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because most of these people, unfortunately, are not even sensitive to, to God. And they don't hear God from God. Mm -hmm. That's why they are sounding the way they sound. Mm. Because honestly, if you if you hear from God, you wouldn't there are things, the things you won't you tell yeah. <laughs> your yeah. sister. To yeah. be very honest, yeah. if you're listening and you hear from God, you yeah. won't tell someone that. Yeah. So, uh -huh. so that's why I'm saying probably that would be my answer. Yeah, yeah like go talk to God about this situation because mm. He's the Creator and the Giver of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't give life. Mm. I am just an avenue. I'm an instrument He uses to give, mm. you know, to give life. Yeah. So please go talk to the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 yeah, like I mean, and I yeah. think that's what we were saying the last time when we were with Sheila. Yeah, is um, you know. Uh, God ultimately, God is a giver of, of life. Yeah. Um, but also, uh, on the first thing that Abby was saying, as a as a waiting womb, find your voice. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, well, I can promise you that us, we will defend you when we can. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And I, I mentioned that though. I I always had any time I got. I, I guess it's a blessing and sometimes it doesn't feel like so much of a blessing being a public figure. Mm -hmm. So I'd get attacked on public platforms and I had an army of kin. I had <laughs> come out like, one of us is under siege. <laughs> <laughs> you all are <laughs> So I, I can promise you where we can, we will support you. Tabby, w w you know, I've mm -hmm. learned to be very vocal in defending other, other people. But there's times when none of us will be there. There's True. times when your mom won't be there. Your husband might not even be there, or, you know, and vice versa. There's times when you're all alone, when mm -hmm. you meet those con uh, situations. Find your voice. Um, learn to speak for yourself. Mm -hmm. And speaking for yourself doesn't mean being a, a, a harsh person or whatever. You can say the firmest things in the most gentle way. Mm -hmm. And people will respect that. Um, so, yeah, people are not entitled to your space. You owe nobody an explanation. That's right. Nobody at all. We said um, that my womb is not your business mm -hmm. and that does, will never change, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I wish we could just continue with that, respecting one another's boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. Even people who you're friends with, even people you're related mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. You, even your sister's womb is not mm -hmm. your business. Imagine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true, Kambua. <laughs> yeah. I can so. totally relate. I yeah. mean, I, I think I'll talk a little bit about family because yeah. <laughs> for me, all the instances I've gotten pregnant, um, most of the time, mm -hmm. my family has been extremely supportive. Yeah. And by my family, I mean, I am married. So I'm yes. talking about my Both husband's sides. family and my family. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But there are instances, mm -hmm. you know, you would find people 
uh, having a lot to say. Like the first time I had, I, I was pregnant with triplets. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Unfortunately, someone told me, yeah. um, you know, where we, you know, where we come from, yeah. mm -hmm. um, having triplets is a curse. Oh. Yes. What? So it's okay. Oh. That's you know, mean. That was after That's your loss. Mean. They're saying this after the yes, loss. Yes. It's, it's fine. Oh dear. Yeah. Mm. Or things like, you know, because fibroids had really milked our finances and yeah. my husband, because yeah. I'm in and out of surgeries and mm. all that. Yeah. It's okay, you know. Who determines Maybe God that? allowed it because you guys could wow. not afford it. Wow. And, and, and very, very harsh things. I remember even one time coming out from surgery and the first family function I went, I met someone who told me, mm. by the time, mm. you know, with, and, and by the this, this was actually a doctor. Mm. And she told me there are possibilities that you could have experienced scarring after surgery. And mm. scarring means mm -hmm. barrenness. Oh, dear. What? Literally two weeks mm. from surgery. I literally picked myself up to go for this function because I felt like it would brighten me up. You know, when you're from surgery, you're down. And, yeah. and they told me that. And I was like, w why? Yeah. Why do I have to go through this? Yeah. I feel like when it's from your friends and the outside and the public, it's very different. True. Mm. But it's when it's from people who you think know you, Close who should you. support it you. It breaks you yeah. in places that cannot yeah. break mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And by the way, this doesn't mean I don't love. I love my family. Mm. I adore my family. And yeah. this doesn't mean it's my entire family. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. It's different sorts of people. Yeah. It's in every family you'll find very supportive people, people who won't support oh, yeah. you. Yeah. It's a mix. Yeah. Yeah oranges melons different yeah, things yeah. but why why should you of you know of mm -hmm. all the people and sometimes we are afraid of talking about family <laughs> because yeah. we know yes, you know yeah. we know where exactly yes. they are in our hearts but yes. the reality of the matter is that they don't all support us yeah so and they be. say and their words can really sting, sting yeah. very like deep. deep because these are people you really mm -hmm. really love like like i don't think i love anyone more than my family yes. like i love them to to pieces, yeah, you know. But yeah. then you wonder why would these people say these kind of things? Yeah. And know? I'm just wondering now. Yeah. Mm. Because that's very insensitive yes. for sure. Mm. And if there's that sister or family who's mm. the, who's had a closed a close one mm. go walk the same journey, mm. what would you suggest that they do to support you? Like after loss, mm. what would you have wanted them to do differently? I Being think insensitive yeah. is yeah. a no. Yeah. Mm. What else? Mm. Maybe just to educate. I think I'd want them to be there for me and not to question. Uh -huh. Don't question. Yeah. Just listen and offer the support and the help you can offer me. Mm -hmm. Don't question. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me. Now, what did the doctor say now that you've lost the child? Uh -huh. So will you ever conceive again? Wow. You know such questions. Yeah. When will you plan to conceive? Or how, how is your husband doing? <laughs> And you know, sometimes <laughs> when you're going through loss, your healing journeys are very different. 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 Yeah. And yeah. they want to know, you mm -hmm. know, how, how you support it. Yourself, you're breaking, but they're asking you, how are you? Mm. <laughs> if you get what I mean. Yeah. So it's, I don't think it's called for. I think just support. Come help. For example, if I was at home from a DNC, yeah. help me do the dishes. Come help me maybe prepare a meal. Yeah. Sit with me. Clean Allow me house. to grieve. Don't yeah. even question. Yeah. If I want to cry, let me cry. Yeah. Don't don't tell me things like, it's okay, you'll have another baby. No, 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 well. no, 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 no. <laughs> Please, you're not God. Yeah. Don't yeah. do God's work. Don't mm. start, you know, telling me. Uh, no, 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 no. Mm. Just allow me to grieve. Allow me to be. Yeah. And that's it. Just offer the support. Don't try to give me solutions, as Kamboa yeah. said. Yeah. We live in a solution-oriented uh, society oh, with yeah. the internet, YouTube. Yeah. My God, the you can Google anything. There. <laughs> right? yeah. anything. Yeah. Yeah. There, people, there are answers yes. everywhere. Yes. But imagine, no? Because yeah. what I'm getting that time, is, mm. I think this is what I call Ministry of Silence. Yeah. Mm. Where you just show up yes. Yes. and shut up. Yes. You know, yes. that works yes. amazingly yes. well. Yes. Be quiet. You know. Just mm. sit with the person. You know, mm. wait on them as she's saying. Mm. Wait on. What do you ask them? What do you need? Yeah. You know, mm. um, mm. don't assume you know what they need. Mm. Or don't even um, photocopy experiences, mm. you know. So, uh, let's say I'm ha I've had a miscarriage before. Then you have a miscarriage. So, I think I already know what you, you know, mm. what to say, what to... 
um, um, your situation is different. I think it's so important to always, as much as I can say, um, hey, I've been there. Let me also understand that what you're feeling is so unique to you mm -hmm. that I don't need to minimize it by constantly trying to say, you know, you'll be fine. Even so and so hard. Even mm -hmm. so and you know, mm -hmm. many people have you know mm -hmm. that kind of thing. I'm sure you're not the first one. You oh. know that kind of thing that we say. We think you're helping, but you're actually making it worse because what the, at that point the person is feeling. You're feeling such a a a a, a cocktail of emotions and you're grieving and all of that the last thing you want to hear is it you know it, it's fine all those cliche christian statements um it is and well. i believe i love the lord with all my heart <laughs> <laughs> it is not well when you're grieving mm. you know what i mean mm. um l let that person um let me feel what i'm feeling mm -hmm. w without you trying to cover it in, in blankets of cliche statements um and 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 things like uh you know that kind of yeah, yeah 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 i find that oh. advice very weird it's very weird actually yeah so it, I, let's think through the things that we say yeah uh, yeah let's and having through. a child i think is not the solution to getting over the previous child because no. the loss that was a child you just yes. lost a child yeah. no i still think about all the four kids i lost yeah, yeah. yeah. even though i'm expecting this one yeah. yeah and although i in both my in all the pregnancies yeah. i lost my kids under two months yeah, yeah. i still think about them mm -hmm. and i still remember even the months i lost them mm -hmm. and when those months come i still grieve them yeah. mm -hmm. I, so me having a child does not now make me forget yeah the yeah, past the and the trauma of what i went through yeah. and no yeah. at all yeah. and it's not true mm -hmm. and that's the thing Kamboa. i think we need to stop giving solutions that's what exactly yeah <laughs> we're trying to say just like yeah. let's just stop this yeah. let's stop trying to give people solutions oh have another child mm. see this doctor go to south africa mm. go <sighs> Unless I ask you, you know, if I come to you and I it's ask exhausting. you, what, what can I do? You know, yes, yes. Um, you, you know, you've, uh, you, Hadassah, you've been to Russia. If I come and ask you, you've been to Russia, Hadassah, what is it like? Mm -hmm. Then, yes, fine, let's have that conversation. Yeah. But let's not be quick to just... Um, and I think, we, I don't know if it's the same for men, we can't speak for them, but they'll come <laughs> and speak for themselves. Yeah. But as women, we tend to do that a lot. And um, I know even for myself, I found myself catching myself for, I, let me wait until you tell me what you need mm -hmm. before I quickly start um, offering. But I think, you know, I really like these conversations because a lot of people say things not out of uh, malice. True. Mm. True. They mean so well. Um, it's coming from such a good place. It's people who really care and are concerned about you. Um, I remember about two months ago, there's a lady who wrote me and she said, I'm really sorry for the time I questioned you about when you were going to have children. Mm -hmm. And I respected her for coming to say that, mm -hmm. to say that she was sorry for that because to me, what that sounded like was someone who did not think it was wrong to ask at that time. You mm. know, when she was asking me, she's a, it's that entitlement it innocent, and it's yeah. innocent and yeah. it's, it's what society expects when are you having children. Mm. Um, so it, if you're hearing us and, and you didn't know that it is wrong to ask people those questions, hear us saying now, mm. it is not okay to keep prodding and to keep pushing people because um, people have been pushed off the edge because of questions, Yeah, those true. kinds of questions. You don't know what people are battling with. Mm. Um, I know many times that my husband would say to me, these people are writing A, B, C, and D. They don't even know what you're battling with right now. Mm. And and for me, you know, I'd be like, yeah, and I don't even owe them an explanation. You know, true. I don't even have the energy to start explaining. This is what my story is. And even now as we're talking, I've never fully... Um, opened up and unpacked my story because it's been so intense and such a journey mm -hmm. but i'm like the, the fact that you don't know somebody's journey you don't know you don't know how many tears they have cried you don't know True. how many doctors they have seen you don't know how many you just have no idea about their journey don't ask questions you talked about something very important mm. people should just avoid asking questions yeah. and i want to introduce the aspect of the church Oh, wow. I'm sure we are all in different churches, but mm. uh, it's all the same. We go to worship Christ. We are all saved and all. And I, I'm just wondering, 
I keep saying, I think I mentioned this before the show, that the, some of the places, the most hurtful words I've heard yeah. actually came from the church. And I don't blame them because they don't know how mm. to support waiting sisters or waiting couples. Mm. All they imagine is you're probably um, waiting uh, to have a child when the time is right and all that. Yeah. I'm just wondering, what do you feel the church should do to support us while we wait or any waiting sister? And this is this is broad. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, when you have a loss and probably your church is aware, mm. do you expect them? Would you appreciate if they come visit mm. or you appreciate if they let you grieve? What do they do? These are questions that we we'll keep wow. receiving. OK, I'll let yeah. Tabi answer the loss one. <laughs> um, I feel that as a as a as a waiting woman, I wanted to be seen in the church. I wanted to be seen as a complete woman but like i exist because um there was there was a it felt like there were ministries for the single people the married people children married with children mm -hmm. and then there's just a gap for you know there's us who are just floating you mm -hmm. know and you'd feel it would be in your face on days like mother's day or oh, let all the mothers stand up Let's appreciate them. And it's beautiful. I love Mother's Day, even though yeah. don't get me wrong. I love it. But it was always, it would always make me feel like, oh my gosh, there's a spotlight on me. You know? Where do you fall? Yeah. Where do you fall? Yeah. I'm married, but I don't have children. Um, do we, do we get celebrated? Do we not get, what are we getting mm -hmm. celebrated for? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, is there someone to, to, to listen to us? So I, it always felt like there's, um, um, for me, I felt like my church, and I, I love my church so much. I felt like it was just uh, overlooked, not intentionally. Yeah. We're not intentional with seeing certain people in our society. Mm -hmm. um, so can I, I'd challenge the churches to see, to see, let, let the people who are in the waiting room be seen in the church. Let them, uh, let them have important roles in the church. Let yeah. them, you know... Um, I, I didn't want to feel like, and this this was not in my church, but it was it came from a, a, a fellow believer as far it was as far as work was concerned, mm -hmm. and she was saying, you know, you, you need to hurry up and have children because when you have children, there's a certain respect that you get, and to me it connected it started connecting many dots that were not supposed to connect because mm -hmm. I'm thinking, oh, is this why in church I'm not I don't get to do this and I don't mm -hmm. get to do that? Mm -hmm. Is it because I don't have children? So I wish the church would. Uh, get to the level of every person. Mm -hmm. I know it's a huge task, um, but just let, let let waiting rooms be seen yeah. <laughs> as as people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and not overlooked, uh, and not feel like until you cross over to that side, you're not an important person. Mm -hmm. a, a waiting person is is a very very important person, a very key person, and has amazing gifts and talents that the church can also benefit from. And true, and even in the programs, they could probably incorporate uh, yeah. infertility and waiting yeah. in the. I mean, because when you go to church, I remember. Okay, let me talk about my church. Yeah, there are sessions we've heard. Mm -hmm. It's uh, they're called family life sessions. Mm -hmm. So there are couples like one to five years, five to ten, and yeah, I know I'm in over ten and all, and the subjects are all about parenthood, children, yeah. bringing up the right kids, and I'm yeah. just thinking, huh, I have a cut but I have nieces. So where do I fall? <laughs> so I just feel like we should have, like they incorporate yeah. um, topics that could also be relevant yeah. for both faces. Yeah. yeah. I think that is something that probably the church, if you're listening and you're a leader in the church, think about us. Yeah. Think about us. Tell even, me what you think. Even, <laughs> sorry, before you even go to Tabi. Yeah. Even um, during premarital counseling, mm -hmm. I think that's also an important place to talk about you know, because we, we did get a, a very fantastic premarital counseling class and even talked about children and the children come. Mm -hmm. I wish there were conversations about the children might not come at the time that you mm -hmm. expect them to. So what do you do while you're waiting? You know, what does that mean for your marriage? Um, what does that mean for the two of you? Does it mean you're lacking? Or um, what happens when it gets tough? Because it will get tough, uh, you know. Um, I I think a lot of marriage, a lot of relationships get shaken because mm -hmm. of the waiting journey. I, I, you know, I know for for me there was a strain from time to time mm -hmm. because of it. 
So what do you do when that happens? So let's put it even in our premarital counseling classes. Talk about it because not everyone is going to just who get a honeymoon baby or get those <laughs> oops or get those. You know what I mean? True. Yeah. True. <laughs> or the plant will get in two years and they just get. It's different mm -hmm. for many people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, that's so true. Yeah. Um, I think with the church, let's go back to the Bible. You know, I like addressing church matters <laughs> with the word of God. Yeah. <laughs> because sure. Utambiwa Tabi, yeah, iko kwa Biblia. But time and time again in the Bible, we are shown women who waited. Oh, yes. yes. Hannah, mm -hmm. Sarah, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Rebecca. And then, Rebecca. when you go to the, that's the Old Testament. When you go to the New Testament, mm -hmm. we have the woman with the issue of blood yeah. who bled for 12 years. Yeah. And every time I think of fibroids, mm -hmm. that's what I think about. Yeah. Because I, I bled for three years mm -hmm. continuously. Mm -hmm. yeah. But can you imagine the woman who bled for 12 years? Imagine, yeah. Non-stop. <sighs> and all she needed to do was touch the hem of Jesus' garment. garment. True. Now, the hem of Jesus' garment could represent different things in yeah. the church. Yeah. Mm. The, you know, a hem of something is like the outfit I have. It's just upper two. Mm. Yeah. Not the whole thing, upper mm. two. Mm -hmm. It shows us if we could just have a little, not much, just a little support. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we could be represent the hem of Jesus' garment as a church, True. that would mean we don't have to do much. Mm -hmm. When people lose their children yeah. or when people lose their parents, orphans, mm -hmm. yeah. they're taken care of. There's divorce care in the church. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's all these beautiful things the church is doing ministry, yeah. for loss and all these things. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to waiting wombs and loss of children, yeah. nah. Yeah. yeah, we cannot accept you. Yeah. Why? Mm. I still don't get it mm. till today. I don't understand why we don't have a pregnancy loss ministry in the church. In the church. Yeah. True. True. Yet we have women in the Bible mm. who went through the same thing, who waited on God. Yeah. And these women produced uh, children who made an impact True. in generations and generations that yeah. came later. Yeah. True. Yeah. Why we don't <laughs> take care of these people still shocks me. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. again, as I've said, you cannot show me yeah. or, or tell me these things are not in the Bible or people or these people are outcasts. Mm, See what yeah. Because we, we are behaving yeah, like the like Pharisees. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, our pana, mm. will to tangali our, 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 exactly. Why? In fact, I'm just yeah. thinking aloud. Mm. Look at Hannah and the time she went to the temple mm. and yeah. then... Eli asked yeah. if she had taken if she anything. Was drunk, yeah. You know, I'm just thinking maybe that is what people think sometimes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> all she needed was just mm. that touch, like, hey, yeah. sister, mm. it's, it's mm. fine, it's yeah. fine. Mm. I see you, I hear mm. you. So I'm just thinking, probably the church does, is not even aware of where they need to step in, which which is a little surprising because um, and now I'm just th throwing a random statistic that one out of four women have experienced a miscarriage true so imagine in church one out of the four women that you know that also means that it's including the pastor's wives it's including mm -hmm. the deacon's wives mm -hmm. um it's not for some people this is not a, a, a pain that's for some people um that the journey of infertility is not for some people mm -hmm. it's the it's a couple that you know in church mm -hmm. so why is it that we have completely overlooked it and i think when especially when as a church we neglect to address these issues then mm -hmm. boils down to society it's still a taboo you know true but if the church took it up and said you know we're gonna do this we're gonna uh, rally with this with these ministries we'll be vocal about these things it will be so easy to handle on other a lot easier to handle on other levels mm -hmm. but if the church is the first one to say mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. kind of do that because i think that's i feel like silence um Silence can, is a blessing when we were talking about, you know, earlier we were saying, you know, just go and be quiet and support. Yeah. But where you're supposed to step up and do something when you're quiet, you're actually consenting to the injustice or um, the, 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 the fact that something is being ignored. You're consenting to it. So. Yeah. My challenge, and, and, and as, as we're challenging the church, we're challenging ourselves because we are the church. You know, yeah. We're believers. We're part of the, bo the body of believers. But if there's people who um, are listening, who are actively involved in the church, I think these are ministries that need to be taken up very seriously. Yeah. And support, actively support the people who come to your church, know what they need and how you can help them.
And that was mm-hmm. Jesus' ministry. The yeah. ministry of Jesus was to bring hope yeah. and yeah. salvation. Yeah. Jesus didn't come to ha- to celebrate and no, no, no. He didn't look down on anyone. His yeah. ministry was to bring hope and salvation. Exactly. Look at all the people he healed. Yeah. yeah. Look at all the people he performed yeah. miracles. You know, and, yeah. I mean, that was his ministry. So if as a church we are not embracing that, mm-hmm. then what is what are we doing? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if in your churches uh, where you worship there is uh, what is it called baby. It's a service where kids are blessed. Baptism. Dedication. Dedication. Yeah. dedication yeah. That's yes. the word. Mm. I don't know if you have baby dedication. We, we do. do. Oh, when, every time it happens, mm. I'm sure my husband will also comment on this. Mm. I usually just wish they'd pause and mm. also pray for yeah. women exactly. and couples. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You know. Because yeah. Yeah, it's all about celebration, which is nice. Which yeah. is nice. We really appreciate mm. that. But just take a moment and pray for anyone who may be struggling to yes, conceive, who's yes. gone through a loss, who suffered a loss, yes. and just put them in God's hands. Yes, mm. yes. Church pastors, ministers, yeah. leaders, yeah. please yeah. remember when it comes to mm-hmm. that. And self-help groups. Huh? We have oh, these yes. uh, groups, e, we call them e-groups in mm. our church, no. where people meet every month or whenever. No, the cell groups. Cell when so, yeah, yeah, when somebody mm. loses a child, how about we go visit them? Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. spend time with them, yeah. encourage them. Why yeah. don't we do that? Yeah. Why do we encourage people when they we go visit people who've lost loved ones? Yes. Or sick people. Yeah. Mm. Why why are waiting wombs or people who've lost children? Different. They've yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want to take you back to marriage, Kambura. Yeah. You mentioned that uh, while we wait, sometimes we are, the marriages are strained. And the reason I want to bring this up is because maybe it's my inbox or maybe it's all of us mm-hmm. i received so many messages of oh wow you're the perfect couple you don't even have issues i wish i wish uh your my your husband my husband was like yours or i wish <laughs> marriage goals i wish and that, like <laughs> if only i had a wife like you and i'm yeah. just thinking you have no idea what <laughs> Can you handle me? <laughs> I go with marriage goals and all. Yeah. You guys have perfect marriages. <laughs> oh, oh wow! <laughs> what is that? Are there even perfect people who are <laughs> perfect? <laughs> Where are perfect people found? I'm still searching. Oh, have you guys found? <laughs> yeah, I'm still searching. We will be perfected when we meet our maker. Yeah. <laughs> I hey. don't know that there's <laughs> anything like a perfect marriage. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And if anybody is telling you or trying to show you that their marriage is perfect, be very suspicious. Mm-hmm. Um, because the reality of it is that relationships are hard. Just generally on a basic level. <laughs> <you know? laughs> They're hard. Now, when you throw in um, um, issues of, of, of waiting and, and trying to conceive and that whole journey it really takes a toll on Mm. on relationships and i think for me where um tabby mentioned it in in passing for her as far as loss was concerned i think for me was just how my husband and i process things very very we are we are (laughs) polar opposites (laughs) Mm-hmm. Where me, I think we Preach need to sister. sit in sackcloth <laughs> and ashes <laughs> because it is over we are doomed. <laughs> My husband is like, what? Just that? I mean, what does yeah. that say? You know, and he's like, I'm like, have you have you understood what I have said? <laughs> we, have, we have been told we might never have children. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Oh, just that? Just that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mine would say, <laughs> we will travel the world. God, <laughs> are you? We have yeah. so much fun. Yeah, you know. And, and, and things like, you know, and my husband would say, you're enough for me. And it's, it's oh, it sounds so romantic. I know guys are like, oh, you're enough for me. And I'm like, but children, we yeah. are children. What do you what mean? mean? I'm enough. <laughs> You know, in um, times like you know, my, my, that the times my husband would say uh, things like, for for the longest for years actually, mm-hmm. my husband would call me mother of my beautiful children. He would walk in at home and say, mother of my beautiful children. And for me at that time, I'd feel infertility was just staring me at all directions, and I was constantly being reminded by the voices around me, "You're infertile. You're they call me barren. Mm-hmm. You're barren. You can never. You can never. You can never." And my husband would always say, "Mother of my beautiful children." And sometimes I'd be really happy about it and encouraged. Other times it would really irritate me. I'm like, 
do you not understand yeah. <laughs> change the statement yeah, maybe yeah you know, and mm. you refuse to change mm. the statement mm. and i remember even you know one time telling him he, he came and he the times he would even talk to my stuff and i'd be like i think you know the times is like you know baby you can be really rude because <laughs> to my stomach uh-huh. and I was like so okay have you finished talking to my intestine <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Like, Look <laughs> me, I know what I'm calling for, you uh, know. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is I remember the last time I told my husband you're talking to my intestines, I had conceived and I didn't know. Oh really? Wow. And we didn't know. Mm-hmm. But um you know, just the fact that we were so that we are so different um would sometimes make me think This guy he doesn't really care. He's not as invested in this process as I am. Mm-hmm. Um while him on the other hand he probably would think maybe I'm over magnifying this having children business. Mm-hmm. And so you'd find that at the end of the day we both want the same thing but we're speaking a very different language. Okay. So um mari- I I have I have not known a, a perfect marriage but I've known a marriage that is 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 beautiful and led of god mm-hmm. where fine we will disagree on a lot of things but at the end of the day knowing that we have made a commitment that we are on the same team and my husband has had to remind me especially mm-hmm. that we are on the same team you know mm-hmm. that we are not against each other we are we are we're fighting together mm-hmm. so um i i think that you know pe- people should know that especially if you're if you're finding that you're strained because of the waiting journey it's not it's not unique to you there's nothing wrong with you there mm-hmm. really is nothing wrong with you but don't let the weight become an idol in your relationship and in your marriage mm-hmm. because as as the the two of you you're actually enough you know <laughs> that statement that my husband would say that would really irritate me was the truth that mm-hmm. i'm enough i'm enough for him we are enough the two of us as one we are whole we are complete um and you know getting to that place and understanding that place and then now that even when the outside forces come and try to shake you mm-hmm. there's only so much that they can do true yeah but yeah perfect marriage i don't i haven't yet seen <laughs> even my parents didn't have a perfect marriage <laughs> so i agree like uh, sometimes we'll have issues even in marriages where kids uh, come like yeah. from year one Yeah. I still think there are issues that they don't see eye to eye. Yeah. Like we have we are human beings, we are different personalities, we are just different. So it's okay to have different views, different opinions yes. on children and on everything. It doesn't mean that your marriage is breaking. No. You know. Mm. And trust me. You see we're talking about it. Tabia, I'm sure your your view is the same on this. Absolutely. Mm. I went through uh, the same thing. Mm. The uh, where every time would lose kids, mm. me I'd be at home depressed. Yeah. Crying. Yeah. And him is out with his friends. Mm-hmm. Not because he's not grieving. Mm. That is how he was grieving. Yeah. But for the longest time we'd be like you mean you'd rather be out with your friends than at home with me crying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but that's how he was processing the loss mm-hmm. and me uh, pressuring him to stay home with me yeah. was pressure you know putting a lot of pressure on him mm-hmm. and not mm-hmm. even helping him heal mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i had to get to a point where i, to a, where I was I, i got to understand much later unfortunately that mm. that was how he was processing it yeah. true and that's how we process things even as a couple till today differently yeah. like something great will happen i will be like i'm taking you out for dinner we are celebrating because yeah. as i've told you i'm an extremist <laughs> <laughs> i will come home with a gift and tabby will be all up and him when something happens he'll be like Oh that's good. I'm like wait, what do you mean? Like on a serious note. Can you even just smile? Yani yeah, even try to even fake it. Yani, yeah, would you he just say, "Oh, that's nice." Or he'll go like, "I'm proud of you, babe." That's it. I'm like, "So you're you proud of me? Huh? I want to see." <laughs> Show me. Show me you are proud. Yeah. You know, do something action speak louder than words the love yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. Uh-huh. G- you know like gift, gift giving at yes. uh, what time spent together <laughs> quality time so i'm like you can't just tell me you are proud of me and then <laughs> I'm I'm at a way way. <laughs> put some effort you know uh-huh. and honestly when my husband tells you he's proud of you 
that he means it like that's the biggest thing <laughs> wow. for him he'd ever yeah. you know it's the biggest compliment he mm. can give you but for me i was like i may think we have a problem mm. and because and then you know the other thing we do we compare oh yes. true. you know kamba's husband yeah mm. when this happened he went and got, got her, her car yes. and you you are just here yeah. telling me <laughs> Yeah, you must be joking. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. Mm. We compare our marriages to yes, other people. True. We compare our journeys with other people. Yeah. What we don't know is my journey can never be your journey. Mm -hmm. My experience can never be your experience. Mm -hmm. And you should be so grateful. Yeah. And comparison is the enemy of joy. Yeah. Anytime the enemy is trying to steal your joy, he will make you start comparing. So true. Hey, Hadassah. Sasa wewe vile unajiona na ule mwingine. You cannot see. I mean, there's. I mean, Nani, the other day has given birth to triplets. Mm -hmm. And you, mm -hmm. he's not showing you all the beautiful things that are working in your life. True. Yeah. Because there are many Hadassah. The blessings of God are many in your life. Mm -hmm. Even the fact that you're breathing right now. Mm -hmm. There's someone in blessing. hospital. Amekwa yeah. ma pipes and, yeah. you know, all these things. He won't show you that. He'll only magnify what yeah. is not working. Yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. Because when the enemy wants to attack, he attacks your mind first. True. He will yeah. only start with True. your mind. He yes. will never start with anything else. Mm -hmm. yeah. The attack, anytime you feel yeah. confusion, frustration, yeah. worry, anxiety, anxiety, all these things. They start Demi from the mind. That's the enemy attacking you. Yeah. Because he will never show you all the things that, that are working. He will always show you the one thing That's that is not working. working. And the reality of the matter is your life will never be 100%. No. There's no one time you'll ever sit and say, and yeah, I'm living my best life. Yeah. Even when you make that statement, yeah. there's always that one lingering thing. Mm -hmm. That is not adding up. Yeah. That is the truth. Mm. I mean, and also that's an opportunity for God to show up and show himself faithful in your life yes. so many important things so even wow. when it's not working yeah how may i look at my life is mm. this is an opportunity yes. for god to show him faith yeah. to show himself faithful yeah. so daddy thank you for this opportunity now mm -hmm. do your work yeah and i rest yeah and i'm not discouraged yes. and i'm just at peace I'm it's sorry. like handing yeah. over matters so to god tabby you've uh, introduced an aspect that i'd like us to delve into mm -hmm. you talked about um our journeys being different mm -hmm. so two matters that I'd like us to tie probably and just as we bring this to a wrap. Our journeys are different, meaning if whatever it is you did worked for you, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that it might work for me. And same case with Kambua. I'm sure people are asking you, how did you conceive? What did you do? Mm -hmm. I'm sure people are going to ask you, what did you do differently? <coughs> and this happens to me every time. I think I was just mentioning that there are people <coughs> who send medicines and stuff yeah. my mm -hmm. way. Just like samples, just try to. Mm -hmm. It's free. Yeah, I would even know. charge mm -hmm. you. You know, but we're at a point where we have to encourage people to seek yeah. medication. Yeah? Yeah. Consult a fertility specialist. Yeah. I'd just like us to pass that information strong yeah. so that everyone knows that yeah. our journeys yeah. are different. Mm. Please speak to someone who's listening now. I, wow. Um, I know for sure after this episode, Tabby's DM will be full. I can <laughs> give her, I can guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> you need to buy this product. You need to. <laughs> it won't even be the buy yeah. this product. Mm. It will be what, what did, you did you do, do to, conceive? Oh, to conceive? How did you conceive? Oh, how did you conceive? And I think for mm. like for instance, that's what my DM is full of. And mm. I understand and I really completely empathize with the desperation and sympathize with it because I know I've I've been there wanting to know what can I do. Mm. I completely understand it. However, I'm usually, and, and we've had this chat a lot with, with Hadassah and, and, and Sheila, mm. um, knowing that my journey is so different from Hadassah's, it's so different from Tabby's, mm. it's so, they're so different that I cannot expect Tabby to tell me what she did to conceive so, mm -hmm. that it, mm. it, so that it can work for me. It could even be that Tabby has fibroids and I have fibroids, but we are still different. True. Yes, True. you know, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Our medical histories are different. Our genetic makeup is different. Everything is different. And I encourage women. I was even, I'd even responded to one this morning and I was telling her because it's just the DMs of Ulifanya Nini Upatem Toto, my marriage is falling apart. And I find those so heartbreaking because, mm -hmm. again, it just brings down to how we have um, unfortunately put children on, having children on such a pedestal mm. that if there are no children the marriages break down mm -hmm. um but you know having these dms ulifanya nini ulifanya nini i cannot answer that question because 
one i'm not a doctor true yeah mm. two uh, we are different people so what i say is please see a doctor please see a specialist you know and and i know waiting rooms can give you a whole list of different specialists who can have a look at you and whatever but see a specialist it's so important mm -hmm. um and and take that journey for yourself as a very unique journey it's not a copy paste fertility True. is not a copy paste for anybody um i could even be asking what did you do and maybe it's uh, my husband that's a pro you know it you 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 could be you we ask the wrong questions true true as as waiting wombs and especially as women we ask the wrong questions um also allow me to say it's a little intrusive mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a little intrusive for me to ask you hadassa what did you do <laughs> to conceive because i'm really asking you to open up and tell me all your <laughs> you know tell me history your medical history mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and i don't have a right to that as well so um the right thing to do is ask is there are there doctors you can recommend is there a good guy now i can see those are good questions mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. the resources are there uh, but also not tying it down to um i want the doctor who because <laughs> <laughs> i want Kambua's doctor Kambua's doctor yeah <laughs> and look i have an amazing doctor i mm. love her so much she's been such a blessing in my life mm. but even she says that she's she just does her work god is the one ultimately conception yeah. is yeah. divine it's conception He's the is the creator divine. by yeah. the way yeah. let's god. not forget it yeah. is god mm. you know <laughs> so it, you could have the greatest specialist from i don't know mars you mm. know and still if it's not god's time god's way it it still may not happen so it's not tied down to a specialist um but we're saying uh, the right thing is get information know what's happening with your body stop self diagnosing stop doctor google mm -hmm. <laughs> because google has you everything. can write a will mm -hmm. just by checking out honestly <laughs> <laughs> the things google has done in my life <laughs> <I'm not about laughs> google <laughs> Oh my god. Am I dying? Yes. <laughs> am I, oh my am I pregnant? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. So, um get your information from the right places, from the right uh, resources, not from chat groups. Um you can get positive information there, but um rely solely on professional information. You know True. where you can actually say I've gone I've gone to uh, I've seen a doctor. This is what my medical journey is like. How where can I go from here? I think those are better things to ask than ulifanya nini? Mm -hmm. Uli kunywa nini? Uli you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I, I think you you heard that very clearly because mm. th this happens so many times. Like hadasa mm. The things that I think are like I, I appreciate are people who ask me uh, what did I do to get better in terms of endometriosis yeah. then I'd say I had surgery with yes. an endo specialist you know yes. had to change my lifestyle but that comes from a point of I want to get better yes but if you ask how did you get pregnant you probably just say I had sex <laughs> just that is that the answer you're looking for <laughs> I no guess not. no mm -hmm. so um see a specialist yeah. there's so many if you don't know where to start you can contact us we we'll mm -hmm. link you up with one mm -hmm. tabby i'm throwing you now into this box there are a number of let me do this preachers mm -hmm. specialists <laughs> uh bishops who reach out and take advantage mm -hmm. of waiting rooms waiting couples mm -hmm. they have these solutions they say send an offering and we'll pray for you and this will happen I've had cases of where I've been offered uh holy water mm. and I'm just thinking hmm it's just different or what you know like mm. just drink it send money I'm going to send it over to you what would you advise a waiting couple or a waiting woman who's been approached by such preachers or bishops to do some weird stuff let me just call them weird to conceive <laughs> I know this <laughs> takes me back to those days when Jesus did miracles. Mm -hmm. I think that's how probably people are cheated because you're told Jesus turned water into wine. Mm -hmm. If you drink this, well, my answer is we those people are not Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is the only one who does miracles. <laughs> Nobody yeah. else does miracles. Mm -hmm. And um number 2 as the church or the body of Christ we need to stop being ignorant mm -hmm. unfortunately we have a lot of ignorance in the church mm -hmm. um to a point where for example when i was i was going through my fibroid journey um 
people would tell me me i have fibroids and i have four kids mm-hmm. stop telling us here at you you have fibroids and you can't have kids mm-hmm. and here's the thing there are two types of fibroids symptomatic and asymptomatic True. and fibroids depending on the location the size yeah. you know all those things for example mm-hmm. i had submucosal ones that were in my uterine cavity where the baby supposed to grow mm-hmm. so anytime i'd get pregnant the ut- the, the fibroids would uh, fight with the baby yeah. in terms of taking you know all the nutrients yes. and everything and and blood and mm-hmm. i'd lose my pregnancies True. now Probably this person's fibroids are on the wall of the uterus. Mine mm. on the wall. Exactly. So they will different. not affect your pregnancy. Yeah. Mm. You know? Mm-hmm. So that's the thing. Misinformation, ignorance. Yeah. If that person knew about fibroids, mm-hmm. if they had researched or talked to their doctor about mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. they would understand that it is possible to have fibroids and not have kids and yeah. also have kids. Yes. You know? Yes. So that's True. the thing. A, a lot of ignorance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot. And and unfortunately, you know, there's this thing where people say ignorance is bliss. Mm-hmm. Not, Me, I don't not. like that statement mm-hmm. at all mm-hmm. because it is not, guys. True. It's not even funny. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you are not allowed to be ignorant. Mm-hmm. In this day and age, I think it's actually uh, quite sad mm-hmm. and it's something that really I think throws me off yeah. to be just ignorant mm-hmm. you don't know not because um, the information is not there but you're not willing yeah, to learn yeah. you're yeah. not willing to research people are so lazy yeah. someone will come to your DMs and ask you Tabby um, <laughs> I, in my period when I have nausea what do you think you should take <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Tabby right there <laughs> Honestly, yeah. for me, yeah. I, and someone might perceive this differently, that is laziness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, honestly, yeah. it is laziness. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> have you even found out? Have you yeah. tried? Have you talked to a doctor? Have you even researched? Even if we say Dr. Google, for example, yeah. which is not, we are not Basic. advocating for it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it, it is it's it's a joke. Something. Yeah. Try, about, try. Yeah. You see, me the, after my first surgery, I did my first surgery in 2017. Yeah. In three months, mm-hmm. my fibroids were back. Mm-hmm. I said, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. This is too much. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go on my own research. I didn't even call my doctor Hadassah. Mm-hmm. I started researching about fibroids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was happening is that there are fibroids the doctor didn't see during that surgery. Why? They were microscopic. Yeah. So he removed what was he could see mm-hmm. and the other ones were growing at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I sat down through my own mind. I decided, okay, so simple logic. Maybe um, if we can do another surgery where he can open up my uterus, my, 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 my um, abdomen and see my entire uterus so he has a bigger surface area he's working with he can see probably everything that's what i thought because the other surgery was not as invasive they were using yeah Yeah. and they were using i think microscopes or something so it's not they can't see you know everything so me with my brain my little probably my little knowledge Mm -hmm. i was like hmm you wait we're going to do another surgery <laughs> without even yeah, yeah. And, and and literally this is just simple logic and i went and sat down with my doctor and my doctor told me but you're not happy um we can just still do another lab i told him and convinced me why i mm. need to do the same surgery that didn't work again mm. so yeah. we'll just remove the ones and then i told him then after three months no you're so back. here's what we're gonna do dr mm-hmm. we're going to do an open (laughs) myomectomy which is more invasive and Mm. you know you're going to remove everything Mm. and he was like but tabby you know you have another i told him we're gonna do it yeah and i'm not trying to tell you to go and tell your doctor what to do yes (laughs) but this is me you know i sat down with myself researched talked to god about it and thought about it yeah Yeah. and i took charge as kamboi saying of my health because this thing of being ignorant that's why doctors are lying to us nowadays yeah, yeah, unfortunately yeah. they don't even have all the answers mm-hmm. that's why this may be take advantage exactly yeah, because they ignorant. see you don't know yeah. like today i'm pregnant if i every time i go for a checkup ask my doctor's questions and he's like mm-hmm. yeah by the way if you're talking to tabby you better know what you're talking about yeah. because i'm not going to take this mm-hmm. funny you know answers yeah. sometimes even doctors give you you'll just be fine 
what's the meaning of that? Yeah. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling pain. Yeah. yeah. And you're telling me I'll be fine. Yeah. What is the meaning of that pain? What should I do? Exactly. And that's why I'm saying it's ignorance. Because there are people who go to the hospital, they have a lab result and send it to me and ask, what does this mean? I'm thinking, didn't you just come from the hospital? Like, why didn't you ask your doctor? Exactly. You're not a medic. Ask questions. Like, ask your doctor all the questions you have in mind. Yeah. By the time you leave that consultation room, yeah. make sure you are at peace. Yes. Not because your results are okay or anything, but mm. you've asked everything yeah. you'd like answered. Yeah. Yeah. Very important. I don't know why we feel so intimidated by, um, you know, professionals in that sense, you mm. know, doctors and whatever. A lot of people are so, or, or generally people are just afraid of asking questions. Mm. Mm. Maybe you look like, you look like what, like you don't know. You actually don't know. Yeah. That's why you're asking. And I have no problem with looking yes. like I don't know. Exactly. Actually, I will always look like I don't know. Yes. I'm the one who will ask you the most questions yes. in the room. I was yes. that type of student. Yeah. Even till to date, I ask my mom a thousand yeah. questions. I was yeah. that child who was really annoying. Because how do I grow as yeah. a person if yeah. I'm not learning? Yeah. Yeah. That is the thing. So yeah. why, why, as Kambo is saying, yeah. why do we get so ask, scared? Ask, don't ask be afraid questions. of asking. Mm. Ask, mm. So that on the flip side, where, where as Tabi asked and took charge and said, we're going to go for another surgery, the people who are going for surgeries right, left and center, not knowing why they're going for yeah. surgery. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, hospitals are making money out of them. Ulifanyo surgery, walisema, walisema nini, walisema, kuna kitu wanatoa nini mm. walikuwa wanatoa hata hata sijui mimi niliambwa tu niende at least spend how much mimi aliniambia tu ni 600,000 sana ningefanya no 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 and then you go for the next one and the next one do your research come on yeah yeah you see before my last miscarriage last year i got pregnant and and what the doctor was not telling me the reason why i i miscarried was because my my fibroids were inside my in uterine cavity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I did with the results after that? After, you know, like they told me these are the fibroids you had. I went and Googled. I won't mm -hmm. lie. Mm -hmm. Submucosal fibroids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did. I sat down. It was like I was studying for, you know, something exam, really yeah. no. And then I started learning. Okay. Is it you to the So that's why the child, when they get here, this is what happened. You yeah. know, I started yeah. studying. Mm -hmm. And then that made me understand Wait, if we can remove this fibroids from this location, it would a help. baby can actually grow. Yeah. And that is exactly what happened. Although I believe it was all God ordained. God, yeah. But that is but imagine if I sat there and the doctor just kept because my doctor kept telling me to get pregnant by the way. Mm. Even with him knowing that I had submucosal fibroids, just just get pregnant. I may say no. I go mm. to a point of like something is not adding up. You guys. took charge. And yeah, you it's not making research. sense. Yeah. There's something deeper than what. And I've, I've actually found out later on what it was. Mm. And and that's why, unfortunately, even when you go to a doctor with that type of information, mm. they'll tell you, you know, uh, the problem in today's society, people think Google and all these things. <laughs> they think they know too much. Yeah, they know too much. <laughs> Just come to us and, and I get it. I'm not trying to say doctors are not good. It's mm -hmm. a balance. But you have, yeah, to have a balance. Yeah. Let's, let's stop being ignorant as yeah. a society. Yeah. Um, let's stop uh, trusting doctors mm -hmm. and other sources of information mm -hmm. more than the brains God has given us. Mm. Because also, that's the reason God gave you a brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. he gave you a brain because he knew there are moments you yeah. will need to think, yeah. to reason with yourself. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, he put everything you need to, to survive in this life had us inside us. So. Absolutely. Because <laughs> some things are not even, some things probably require a lifestyle change. Mm. You know? mm. Um, it might not even be a medical treatment in that sense. It could yeah. be you need to change what you're eating. You know, you need to get more active. It could be mm. all of these things. Mm. So yeah, take charge about your health. But I think going back to the, um, you know, the pastors, prophets, bishops who yeah. take advantage. It, it, there, there were these people in the New Testament called the Bereans. Yeah. Whenever they would go to the synagogues or wherever where they would go to be taught about the word of God, these people, the Bereans specifically, would go back yeah. and read the scriptures mm -hmm. for themselves mm -hmm. to understand it, to know if what they were being told was true. True. So they never, I think uh, as believers, we've also become very lazy believers where our work is just, we are like baby birds. 
we just go to church with our mouths open <laughs> feed me feed me feed me till i want no more <laughs> come back home. back feed me feed me feed me you know yeah. so even when there are and there's a lot of there's i thank god that there's a lot of solid pastors and whoever in the church mm. but there's also a lot of deception Hello. so if your work is just to go feed me feed me feed me you're taking in the right information you're taking in wrong information you know when you're told buy this miracle oil it will make you you just okay i will buy it drink Holy this water. i will drink it drink jik you drink it you know what i mean yeah um I, even things as uncomfortable as so called men of god sleeping with to women, open wombs to and open it happens wombs, wow. you know it such happens. ungodly evil things that are happening in the name of the gospel mm-hmm. Le- go back for yourself question that information you have the word of god read it for yourself get a conviction personal conviction from god mm-hmm. is this of you god you know and if it's not it doesn't sit well with you tabi said the other day to us that god is a god of peace <laughs> and mm-hmm. he is that's who he is mm-hmm. um when something is of god it's also followed by peace when there's a restlessness in your spirit it's okay to just let it be yeah um true. but yeah let's be let's be people who take charge of our health but also take charge of your spirituality mm. yeah mm. amen wow. yeah, mm. amen Wow, as you can see, I'm surrounded by two women who are heavily uh, not laden. What is the word? <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sure at this point they could be hungry. <laughs> so we have to be hungry. <laughs> And so maybe just before we wrap mm. it up we can pause and mm. give that parting word to someone who's struggling or who's waiting and just you know we do this every time. Yeah. It's time for us to give some hope. and mm. courage to someone who's at the verge of giving up mm. be it a couple a woman or just someone out there mm. so i'd like you to look into the camera and mm. just give a word of encouragement tabi let's go with you first mm. which camera this one <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um if you are a waiting womb this is so hard for me to talk about because i know your situation might be very different from mine um but here is the thing when everything is not working and the world is shutting down on you mm-hmm. and you don't know where to get your help from not from a doctor your husband not from your mother not from your friends the people you love the most you are left with you but what we don't see is it's not just you there's someone who always lingers there's someone who's always around you and that is god he is your creator let me give this example when you buy a microwave it comes with a Uh, manual, manual. manual. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um if you don't read the manual you might not be able to operate that microwave mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now your manufacturer is god mm-hmm. and you came with a manual by day if you don't know and the manual is his word and you can actually talk to him through prayer mm-hmm. and sometimes i know it sounds so cliche when you say just pray about it you know mm-hmm. read the bible but really you will get all the answers you need if mm-hmm. you talk to him and read the manual how to operate and navigate your life um before you go crying to people and finding help and uh listening to all the noise that is around you mm-hmm. i ask you go back to your manufacturer mm-hmm. and ask him daddy how how do how do i handle me mm-hmm. how do how do i get solutions for this heaviness and this difficult thing i'm going through mm-hmm. and for me that's what it came to mm-hmm. Um it got to a point where I I was tired of running wild and finding answers from doctors and crying and being depressed and one day I sat with God and told him I can't do it. Mm-hmm. I said honestly God like legit I've given up. Mm-hmm. Do whatever you want to do with me. Mm-hmm. I am at your mercy. Mm-hmm. And the moment I surrendered that's the day God stepped in for me. All this while I I used to say I'm born again and I was I would pray and all these things I had not surrendered I had not reached my end you know reaching your end means with your own capability you cannot do it that's what god wants mm-hmm. god does not glorify himself in situations where you think you're in control mm-hmm. you have to get to that point where you're like siwezi baba nimeshindwa mm-hmm. tell him exactly how you feel don't sugarcoat it If you're angry let it out tell him exactly how you feel mm. and 
where we reached our end that is when god steps in mm. trust me that's what he did for me um if i can share my own experience i was not trying to get pregnant i'm still shocked that i'm actually pregnant mm. because the beginning of this year i, I told god it's done mm. i'm done mm. i'm done with trying to get pregnant i'll concentrate on my career and other things in my life mm. and i will shelf this uh thing completely it's over i'm done how I got pregnant, I still don't understand till today. I make fun and say, I don't know if an angel visited me at night. <laughs> <laughs> because I was not trying. <laughs> I don't know. But the reality is I reached my end. Mm. I had gotten to my end. Yeah. And I, I was at peace with it. I was not fighting. Mm. I was at peace. But where I got to my end, that is where God stepped in. So I'm asking you today, go back to your manufacturer. Mm. Um, go back to the manual he gave you, his word. And let him work on you. Mm -hmm. Let him tell you what he wants to do with you. Yeah. I had to go through fibroids for three years because what I didn't know God had put in me an assignment to help women who are going through fibroids. And I had to go through that threshing. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes before I got married in 2016, I told God, use me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you put me on earth for, but use me. Mm -hmm. And all hell broke loose. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Everything. Mm -hmm. Because... God knew there's no way I can give you this assignment if you've not you don't understand what it's about. Right. You can't help a woman who has fibroids if you don't know yeah. what fibroids are. To walk the journey. I didn't know that the the biggest prayer I'd prayed would mm -hmm. set me up for the biggest um <laughs> warfare I've ever gone through in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But look at me now. Mm -hmm. I'm here to say that God is real. If you've mm -hmm. never believed God is real, he's real, guys. He's not a joke. He's not a story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, bet on him. Mm -hmm. he, he, if he's, I pray he's your last bet mm -hmm. because he's going to work. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all. I pray that yeah. he strengthens you every day. Yeah. You are loved more mm -hmm. than anything by a maker who you've never seen, mm -hmm. but is always lingering around. You're never alone. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. Wow. wow. Thanks so much, Tabby, for that. Um, I pray that this joy will actually fill you and fill your heart because I know that the journey of waiting is filled with so much hopelessness and brokenness and pain, but that you're able to go through that journey with a peace that God, it's a peace that preserves you from everything that's happening around you. He, God is able to keep you in the eye of a storm where even if things are falling apart around you, you, are, you have that peace that passes all understanding. Um, when Hagar was, had been cast away, um, she, 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 she encountered God for the first time. And that's when we see the name Jehovah Elohim is the first time we see it appear in the Bible. It means the God who sees. And I pray that for every person who is waiting, that you will know that Jehovah Elohim sees you. You are mm -hmm. seen. Mm -hmm. He sees you. You are important to him. And in as much as we might sound like a broken record, you are enough. Mm -hmm. um, he sees you as you are and he sees you complete. And I pray that you will, every time you get up and you have uh, that battlefield in your mind that tells you that you are less than, you will remember that the Jehovah who sees you, Jehovah Elohim sees you as enough. And as you've had, you know, there's so many, the testimonies keep coming because God is still in the business of working miracles. I've seen God do things that nobody can explain. People's uteruses restored, mm -hmm. uh, people with locked tubes having babies, because we're talking about a God who works the supernatural. He's not dependent on the things that we can explain. God does like only he can. His time and his way. I remember waiting for seven years, but the other day I was challenged by a woman who gave a testimony on my page and she said, Kambua, I waited 14 years. And, and, and she said, you know, last year when you had a baby, I said, God, remember me also. Mm -hmm. So she's now two months pregnant. Mm -hmm. And I just, it, it made me break and cry and say that, God, you're still working in ways that we cannot understand. That's the God that we serve. Put your hope in him. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Time is nothing to God. Whereas it seems like it has lapsed, you've missed this, that, the other. Time is nothing to God. So may he bless you and may he keep you. And may you remember you are seen and you are enough. Wow. Maybe we should just end it there. No, you have to sing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have to sing. Oh something. my goodness.
I'm just looking at someone who's despairing now mm. and who's wondering if God is even God in their lives. Mm. If God really exists, you probably tried everything. And I, I have to admit that I have been in that space in some instances where I look at myself and I listen to the voice of the evil one. And maybe that is where I want to encourage you on. That learn to see the beauty that you are. Learn to see the positive things about yourself. Learn to look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself that I am not defined by my current condition. Mm. Yes, you could be having blocked tubes, low AMH, um, and endometriosis, PCOS, all these things. But don't allow them to define you. Mm. God loves you so much. And maybe you, may be, you might not be understood by everyone around you. But God actually mm. understands. You are enough. God loves you. The same God who's blessed Kambua, the same God who's remembered Tabi, mm. is the same God who will remember you and me. Amen. Amen. There are many, many things we don't know about tomorrow. There are many things we may not understand about tomorrow. But one thing we know for sure is that God is real. Mm. He's gone ahead. He Amen. knows about that tomorrow Amen. and he will come through for you mm. in his time mm. and according to his will. Amen. Mm. So while you wait, brighten up. Remember yeah. what Hannah did when she left the temple? Hannah went home, she bathed, she cleaned herself, she ate because mm. she had surrendered. Yeah. Maybe it's time to surrender. And remember, you are enough. Yeah. And on that note, I'd like to invite you for our conference that is going to take place from the 4th to 6th of December at Misty Mount Narumoru. Mm -hmm. There are details on our website, www.waitingwombstrust.org. Check it out and join us if you'd like to. We'll have amazing people join us. Kambua will be presenting. Amen. Kambua will be sharing. I'm Tabby excited. is going to be a speaker there. And <laughs> wow. Amazing Yay. people. You know. <laughs> so come. Come, come. Let's talk. And our yeah. theme is what it is. Uh -huh. You are enough. enough. I love it. Sure. That's the thing. You are yeah. enough. Mm -hmm. So you are welcome. You feel free to register, join us, talk to us. You need some encouragement, some love. We have support groups online. Mm -hmm. We are Waiting Wombs Trust online. Kambua is Kambua. I'm just mm -hmm. Kambua. You can get me on Instagram, Kambua Muziki, but I'm just Kambua on other platforms. And Tabi is? Uh, Tindishu uh, on Instagram. You can follow my uh, initiative for mm. uh, advocating for women who have fibroids. <laughs> uh, that is my red is beautiful KE on Instagram and also on Facebook and on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My personal profile is Hadassa Trip. Just look me up and let's, let's talk. We have been dressed by none other than Vivo. Vivo. Thank you, Vivo. Yeah. Thank so you so much for making this <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to our listener. This would not happen without you. We are glad that God has put us in this space to be just a channel of blessing. Mm -hmm. So pray for us too. And until next time, it is from us, Kambu, myself, Kambua, Tabi, the crew. We just want to say thank you for your time and bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.